this is Rufus Troutman. Welcome to a moment of grace where I take a moment and share my heart concerning the gospel of grace, the message of the cross, or simply put, Jesus Christ and him crucified. And listen, if this ministry is blessing you, consider supporting it down below. Now check this out. Last week I came at you, we talked about 1 Corinthians 1, 18 and 19. We talked about Paul. Paul said that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them who don't believe, but to us which are saved, it is the power of God. And so we kind of concluded in that video that the, the, the power of God is within the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit is that power and so we see that the reason that the gospel must be preached is because what it does it gives the Holy Spirit a legal right to come into the heart and the life of the believer and do what he needs to do so without the gospel my friend truly there is no power and so this week I want to pick up on that whole context of the power that's in the gospel or why that power is important which will lead to further messages but for right now I'm gonna take you to my text which is first Corinthians Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 through 5 and here we go we're gonna check this out Paul saying and my brother when I came to you I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God and so when Paul is saying that I didn't come with excellency of speech what he is simply saying is he did not rest upon his own ability or trust in any philosophy or any other way of doing it than the way God had showed him to do it. And unfortunately, this is a very popular today where men will take other men's books and preach them. I'm not talking about something scriptural, but I'm saying some some bestseller about psychology, about emotional healing and uh, the seven steps, the eight steps to this. And we substitute those messages for the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And I know this can be a temptation for preachers to to preach that which impressed people to build their platform to make them look popular to make them look big I mean you see this going on from time to time when a preacher begin to hook up with these secular artists just to make their brand bigger and that's another term people use my brand my brand my friend I don't have a brand except Jesus Christ and him crucified and so Paul is saying listen but I came declaring unto you the testimony of God my friend check this out God has a testimony. What is that testimony? Jesus Christ and him crucified. So Paul is saying, listen, though I have education, though I have knowledge, I came only to declare the testimony of God. Well, when we go on to verse 2, he says it like this. He says, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. So you got to understand, Paul was educated. He was trained. He went to the best universities. He, he was a Pharisee, a Pharisee. He knew the law. This man had knowledge, but he made a decision. He said, I determined, which means he concluded, he judged, he came, he after weighing the issue, he came to the decision that he would not preach nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified which is the gospel, my friend. Jesus Christ and him crucified is the gospel. This alone is the message that will set the sinners free, that will set the captives free, that will give victory to the life of the believer. This is why the message must be preached because it's the only thing that sets man free. You see, you gotta understand, listen, man is a sinner in desperate need of a savior and Jesus is the Lord and savior. Why is this important? This means that what Jesus did is the only thing that can affect or change the heart of men, which means all other religions does not have this power. Therefore, they are false. I'm talking, yeah, I said it. I'm talking about Islam, Buddhism, Shintoism, Confucianism, Catholicism, humanism, all the isms. They have no power to change the heart and the life of the sinner or the believer. And verse three right here, we see that Paul, he said, I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling. Weakness right here is just simply an expression of totally dependent upon God. Because let me tell you, when you preach the gospel, you must be dependent upon God because it is a supernatural message. So you can, it's easy to preach other stuff that has nothing to do with the gospel because it excites the flesh. And there's a flesh, there's a self strength, self ability to want to 
preach what man preaches, but when you preach, hallelujah, when you preach the gospel, there must be a dependency upon God. Then he goes on, he said he was in fear. But let me say this, it was just the fear that he might not preach the message of the cross correctly. It wasn't the type of fear that lacks faith, but rather that comes from the mind of impending danger. Because you got to remember the conditions that Paul preached under. In fact, God spoke to Paul about it because of the tax that was against him over in Acts chapter 18, verse 9 to 10. Check this out. He says, then spake the Lord to Paul in a, in, uh, at night in a vision, be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace, for I am with you, and no man shall be able <clears throat> to hurt thee. <clears throat> for I have many people in this city. So when God has called you to an assignment and he's called you to do something, understand there will be attacks. There will be people who rise up who don't like what you're saying, like what you're doing. But let me tell you, don't be afraid. Continue to preach. Continue to go forth. Continue to walk because you got to know that God is with you. How do we know this? Because if God has called you, he will equip you to do what he's called you to do. I ain't backing off of it. I'm telling you, he will equip you to do what he's called you to do. Because you got to understand this, faith is continuing to believe despite everything saying the opposite. Faith is refusing to quit when you fail. Faith is getting up when you have fallen down. Faith is pressing on in spite of the obstacles. Let me encourage your faith today, my friend. Stand strong. Don't be discouraged because you had a setback. Don't be discouraged because somebody left you. Don't be discouraged because you don't have the answer. Continue to believe even though you don't see the answer. So let's move on. Verse 4, and Paul said, listen, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but was in demonstration of the spirit and power. Here we go again. Paul is showing you that the power is in the Holy Spirit, but it was based upon the fact that Paul did not preach from his ability to preach. He had a dependency upon God and a brokenness within his heart and soul to trust Jesus. How do we know this? Because, see, Paul, again, was educated. Paul had learned so many things concerning the law, but he makes an interesting statement. He said, listen. Everything that I have learned, I count it as dumb. I'm going to be straightforward with you. I count it as doo-doo that I may win Christ. He's saying all the knowledge I got, I lose it. I drop it that I may win Jesus Christ. So today, my friend, let me tell you, the power is in the gospel. The power is through the Holy Spirit. So if you need the power of God for anything you're struggling with, not just struggling, maybe you just need the power of God, period. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can believe. God by faith and he'll touch you. Why did he do this? I'm moving because in verse 5, Paul said this, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. There we go again. So the question I'm going to end this video with this is, what is your faith in? Because we see that it's faith in Jesus that releases the power. It's faith in Jesus that changes the life of the sinner. How do we know? He said you are saved by faith through grace. So it's the grace of God that works within the heart, but it's activated by the faith that we place. Where's your faith? See, Jesus must be the object of your faith. And so we're going to pick up from there next week, talk about the object of your faith. If this has been a blessing, consider supporting the ministry. But until then... May God richly bless you, my beloved.